Hey there car enthusiasts! Welcome to Autostats. Today, we're diving under the hood to check out Gasoline Direct Injection Engines, or GDI for short. Now, if you've ever wondered why modern engines keep getting stronger and more efficient at the same time, GDI engines are a big part of the secret sauce. Unlike those old-school fuel injection systems, GDI skips the middleman. Instead of mixing fuel with air before sending it into the engine, GDI fires that fuel straight into the combustion chamber. It's like giving your engine a VIP pass to the fuel. Why does that matter? Well, GDI engines deliver more power, better fuel economy, and they're a bit easier on the environment. To give you a clearer picture, check out these numbers. Here's how some GDI-powered models stack up against their naturally aspirated NA cousins. Take the Ford F-150 for example. Its 3.5L EcoBoost V6 GDI cranks out a whopping 400 horsepower and 500 lbft of torque. Compare that to the NA version's measly 290 horsepower, and suddenly you realize that GDI engine isn't just eating its cake, it's doing donuts in the parking lot afterward. And it's not just the F-150. Whether you're talking about the Mazda CX-5 or the Hyundai Sonata, GDI engines are like the overachievers in the family, way more power, way more torque, and probably more fun at parties. Now, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. Believe it or not, GDI technology has been around for a while. It originally made its debut back in the early 20th century, in aircraft engines of all things. It wasn't until 1955 when the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL brought GDI to cars. And yeah, you could say it was a game changer. But the real turning point? That came in 1996, when Mitsubishi said, let's shake things up, and slapped a GDI engine into the gallant. And just like that, GDI went from a niche tech to mass market magic. Since then, big names like Ford, BMW, and General Motors have taken the GDI torch and run with it. By the late 90s and early 2000s, GDI engines were showing up in more cars than you could count. This was thanks to advancements in electronics and fuel management. Basically, smarter engines for a smarter era. By 2007, GDI was the new normal in the US, with more and more models adopting it. Automakers needed to meet stricter fuel efficiency and emission standards. GDI engines helped them do that, they let drivers enjoy more power at the same time. Technical comparison. So let's break down how GDI stacks up against other engine types. GDI versus port injection. Remember how I said GDI skips the middleman? That's because, with port injection, the fuel is mixed with air before it enters the combustion chamber. With GDI, the fuel goes straight in, like cutting in line at the coffee shop. And because it's direct, GDI engines can hit higher compression ratios, which means better performance and efficiency. It's like showing up early for a party and getting the best seat. GDI versus naturally aspirated NA engines. Naturally aspirated engines rely on air pressure from the atmosphere to help burn fuel. GDI? It says, nah, I've got this, and brings a turbocharger to the game. This leads to more power and torque without having to rely on good old-fashioned atmospheric pressure. In short, it's like going from riding a bike to driving a sports car. Advantages of GDI technology. All right, let's talk about the reasons automakers and drivers love GDI engines so much. 1. Fuel efficiency, GDI engines run lean. Not like diet and exercise lean, but more like burn less fuel while cruising lean. This makes them super fuel efficient, especially during light driving, like when you're stuck in traffic dreaming of open roads. 2. Performance, thanks to direct injection, GDI engines can reach higher compression ratios which translates to way more power from smaller engines. It's kind of like finding out your tiny hatchback is secretly a speed demon. 3. Emissions. GDI engines can be optimized to lower CO2 emissions. That said, they might pump out more particulate matter. But hey, that's why we have filters and exhaust treatment systems, to keep those pesky particles in check. Challenges and Solutions Now, GDI engines aren't all sunshine and rainbows. Like anything, 
they've got their quirks. Carbon buildup. GDI engines can suffer from carbon buildup on the intake valves. Over time, that can lead to some pretty lousy engine performance. It's kind of like your engine has been indulging in too many burgers and fries, things start to slow down. But, car manufacturers are already on the case, developing dual injection systems that combine GDI with traditional port injection. It's like a detox for your engine, keeping things clean and running smoothly. Emissions, as efficient as GDI engines are, they do produce more nitrogen oxides. But, don't worry, modern cars are packed with advanced exhaust systems to keep these emissions in check. Think of it like the engine's way of using air purifiers. Current adoption and future trends. As of 2024, GDI engines are everywhere. Seriously, if your car doesn't have one, it's like showing up to a party without bringing snacks, everyone else is in on the trend. Automakers love GDI engines because they're powerful, efficient, and help them meet ever-tightening emission standards. The future? It's all about hybridization and electrification. GDI engines play a crucial role in hybrid powertrains, giving those vehicles the power they need without sacrificing efficiency. Plus, with multi-point and dual injection systems on the rise, the tech is only going to get cleaner and more powerful. So yeah, GDI engines? They're not going anywhere. And that's the scoop on gasoline direct injection engines. More power, better fuel economy, and a cleaner future. Thanks for hanging out with us here at Autostats. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in the next episode where we geek out on more car tech. Until then, keep your engines revving and your gas tanks full, preferably with something GDI-powered.